All right, I'm live. What day is it? Happy Thursday. I'm just kidding, I know. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining me in the kitchen for another live cooking lesson today. I am really having a fun time doing this because it's just an opportunity to be with you and for us to be together. Um, yes, a lot of us are still social distancing and physical distancing, um, but I want to resource you. I want to provide easy and fun ways to inspire you in the kitchen to help you feel confident. Um, so here we go. It's a small plant based made super easy. All right. So I'm a, I'm a chef with a year and an integrative nutrition health coach. And what I love to do more than anything else is to help people really feel their best to thrive in their body and then to thrive in your life as a result. So we're going to do that with a whole food plant-based diet. If at any point you have a question, please write it in the comment box. I can see it. I'm looking at the screen here on the corner. If you want to say hello, give me a heart, give me a wave, please do that. I want to hear from you. And as we're cooking, uh, interact with me. I have a question for you today. I, um, I want to know what the music is too loud. It is. I will turn it down. I will turn it up. I want this to be a fun space. I want us to just like jam, to enjoy, to raise our spirits here in the kitchen. So we join me for that. Um, if at any point you have a cooking question, please, like I said, put it in the comments box, okay? So today we are going to make delicious, quick and easy homemade shortcakes. I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to do. It only takes a matter of moments and it isn't really that complicated because it's only using minimal ingredients. Ingredients that you can find very easily in market or you may already have on hand. So without further ado, let's get into these delicious shortcakes, okay? So the first thing I want are some flax egg or plant-based eggs. One of the things that I get asked a lot with my coaching clients or with people that I'm taking on and helping support in terms of uh, helping them with recipe development or menu development for their home and their families. They ask if I'm whole food plant-based or if I'm just plant-based, how can I enjoy things like eggs and dairy, things like milk and cheeses, eggs? These things come up so often, probably more often than any other question that I get. And what I have to say is there is a substitute for anything that you're missing in the standard American diet that you aren't going to eat in the whole food plant-based diet. So today, let's talk about how we can make a plant-based egg. It's very simple. The first ingredient that you're going to need for this is flaxseed or flaxseed meal, all right? So you can use regular flaxseed. Let's see if I have some in my fridge so I can show you the whole form. And I do. Your lucky day and my lucky day. Thank you for being here because it's my lucky day because you're here. Here's some golden flaxseed, okay? I'm going to show you in my overhead can. You see this? It has a really brownish, kind of yellowish color. These are super high in an ingredient called omega-3s. Okay, we're gonna talk about these in a little bit, but what you need to know is that there is probably no other superfood uh, that is as potent and is as powerful as the golden flaxseed. Now, if I take these and I grind them up in a spice grinder, here's where that spice grinder comes in handy. You could also do this in a food processor or a blender. When you grind it, you end up with a flaxseed meal or a flour, flaxseed flour. It goes by both names. And here's what it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna hold it up just so you can see. You see this, right? This is ground up flaxseed. You can see little parts of the flaxseed, but most of it is ground up. To make a whole food plant-based egg, you're gonna use one tablespoon of flaxseed to two to three tablespoons of filtered water, okay? So I'm gonna do it here in my small bowl, switch bowls, so you can see I'm doing it in a white bowl, so you can really see. I'm gonna do, I need two eggs for this recipe. So one tablespoon, and another tablespoon, that's the flaxseed meal, okay? I'm also gonna now add filtered water. So I have cold filtered water here. Now, how do I know if I want two tablespoons of water versus three tablespoons of water? It really depends on if the recipe calls for a large egg or a regular egg. Usually, if it doesn't emphasize in the recipe that it, a large egg is required, then you know that they're really just calling for a standard egg. That can be a small or a medium egg, and that, my friends, would require just two tablespoons of the water. And in this recipe, it doesn't say large egg. So I'm just going to use a two tablespoons of water for every one tablespoon of ground flaxseed meal. Here we go. One, two, that's one egg. One, two, that's another egg. Now, most important step, you can't forget this part. You want to mix this up. 
it's very important that you don't just stop here. I'm intentionally showing you that I haven't mixed it yet, but I'm bringing it up to my camera so you can see. You see how one side is really, really wet. It's almost like over uh, soaked in water. Whereas this left side of the bowl here, see that? It is it. It doesn't have very much water. That means that this is not well soaked. And what you're going to end up with is a flaxseed egg that's quite chunky and not so slimy. You want to kind of mimic that slimy quality of eggs. And the flaxseed, ground up, is going to absorb the water and is going to create a really nice, delicious, um, wonderful egg-like consistency. So mix this up, all you need is a little spoon, and then set this aside. This needs to rest for a minimum of about two to five minutes before we can add it to our ingredients, our other ingredients, and add it to our recipe. So just put this aside. You with me? Right, so flaxseed egg. Again, it's one tablespoon of ground flaxseed to two to three tablespoons of water, depending on the size of the egg that you're trying to mimic here. And I really like to buy pre-ground flaxseed meal because it saves me a step, but it really doesn't take all that long to take a tablespoon of flaxseed that's whole, put it right into a spice grinder, a food processor, or a blender, and just blend it until it comes to a meal or a flour consistency. That's it. Now, you can also do this with chia seed. It doesn't have to be flaxseed, but flaxseed's gonna give you those really high amounts of omega-3s. So yummy, I'm really excited that for this. I love flaxseed egg because it gives you a nuttiness and a richness and it gives you a ton of fiber. Eggs themselves don't have any fiber. In fact, animal protein in and of itself doesn't have fiber. That's the thing that it's missing. But with the whole food plant-based diet, we are loading up our system with fiber. And that is what is generally missing from the standard American diet. More than anything else, it is fiber. It's not protein. It's not anything like fat. It's not anything like any of these other um, macronutrients. It's the fiber. That's what's missing. So let's all get a little bit more that. All right, you with me? Let's get to our next step. I'm going to use a clear bowl here right on my uh, overhead cam right at my cutting board so that you can see what I'm doing. And let's go ahead and start with the dry ingredients, okay? So I want to use for my dry ingredients some almond flour. Now there's two types of almond flour in market. There's this kind. It is the let me show you first on so my front cam, the just almond meal. Here's what it looks like. And this is really, really just pulsed up ground almonds. You can tell because it kind of looks like there's almond skin in the bag. It's got this spotted dotted look to it. This is fantastic when we want that almond quality consistency flavor. But if we're trying to mimic flour, here's another much better baking flour to use that's made with almonds and is still gluten-free. It's the blanched almond flour. Now, let me show you the overhead camera here. Again, both of these are from uh, Trader Joe's. You can find these at Whole Foods, Sprouts, Mothers, usually Vons, Albertsons, Safeway. Any, any retailer should have uh, an almond meal that's traditional classic like this one and a blanched almond flour. This blanched almond flour is fantastic for baking because it doesn't have any of those skins on the outside. Um, so it's not going to give you or impart as much of that almond flavor. And it's also gonna mimic more like um, regular whole wheat flour would. So this is fantastic for baking. I can't like to keep both of these in my refrigerator at all times though, just in case um, I need, you know, baking needs here or breading needs here. I love to do uh, breaded tofu, breaded tempeh, breaded vegetables, eggplant, eggplant parmesan, any of those things, I'll use my uh, regular just almond meal. But any baking, I'll use my blanched almond meal, okay? So I'm gonna start with two cups, two full cups of this. And you wanna be really particular about this because baking is a science. So I'm gonna grab my cup measure and I'm just going to make sure that I level it off. See what I mean? It's all nice and level. That's one cup. Now let me add the next. All right, we're getting some good viewership. Hi everyone. Thank you so much for popping on. Here's the second cup. Let me just see who's here. All right, Robin, Berta B, Marie Montoya, thank you so much for coming here. All right, you guys, we have now the next step, our leavening agent. It's really, really, really important. I'm gonna use baking powder. I'm gonna use two teaspoons of baking powder. I wanna make sure this is double acting. Usually every single baking powder is. Here's what it looks like, and right on the uh, can it, tin, it should say double acting. And if it's important for you, go ahead and grab yourself a gluten-free baking powder. Um, this one happens to be, not all are, so it should say right on the tin. 
Let me grab a teaspoon for this. I'm gonna use a teaspoon measure. All right, so I want two teaspoons of gluten-free baking powder. One and two. Remember, we're still on our dry ingredients. And for our last dry ingredient, really important, we want regular sea salt. So I've been super getting into sea salt, super getting into it. That's how much, like super. All right, so super getting into sea salt. It's really yummy. It's very fine. It imparts a very kind of mild salt-like taste. I can tell it's less processed. Um, my body likes it better. I am still using kosher salt, but less and less now, especially for baking and things like this. I used to kind of use kosher salt across the board, but now that I've done a little bit more digging and research, I, I really kind of like sea salt a little bit better. So I'm using this for baking, especially a half a teaspoon. And I'm going to be really good about making sure it's level. I don't want to mound here. I don't want it to be overly salty. And there's no sugar in this recipe at all. So if I were to use sugar, it would be probably come at this step, but I'm not using any. This is going to be gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free, and sugar-free. And guess what? Totally yummy. I mean it. Just stick with me and try this recipe. If you don't believe me, your taste will, will tell you that, that the taste will speak for itself, as I always say. So this is wonderful. It looks great. These are our dry ingredients. I'm just going to give this a mix. Now, I also want to make my wet ingredients. And I think what I'm gonna do is just make a little mound and make the wet ingredients right in here. So uh, to this, I want to um, add a third of a cup of plant-based butter. Let's talk about it very quickly. You can use regular plant-based butter. I highly recommend Miyoko's. We're gonna put a little link here in the comment box so you guys can actually see the butter that I love. Danny, will you go ahead and throw that up there if you don't have a second? A Miyoko's butter, we love it. You can get it on Amazon. It's gonna come from um, Whole Foods likely. Um, if, if you can't find it there though, it is found at Mother's, Sprouts, um, lots of different markets, Safeway even, Vons, where, wherever your market is located, just go and check. It's usually in the butter section and it's usually in a blue and white box and it looks just like regular butter. It acts just like regular butter, it's fantastic. However, it tends to have a lot more ingredients to it. So you could use plant-based butter or you can use coconut oil. Today, I think I'm gonna use coconut oil because I have it and I wanted you to see the difference. So here's two coconut oils. See, we got the green label here and we got the white label here. Both same brand, Trader Joe's happens to be. Um, this green label is refined, meaning all of that coconut flavor has been removed from it, okay? this is unrefined, it's extra virgin, it's delicious, it's coconutty, it's yummy. For this recipe, I'm gonna use the white label, okay? I don't mind that coconut flavor. So here we go, a third of a cup. I have it already measured out right into my well. And then make sure you get every bit about out though. Don't move to the next step until you have every single bit. Now. We want our final ingredient. It's that flax egg that we made. Let's take a look. All right, you can look at it now. See how thick this is? Thick and delicious. This looks fantastic. It is kind of like, has that kind of gooey, slimy kind of texture that eggs tend to have. We want that. It's gonna act as a beautiful binder, a beautiful kind of like the glue to bind these shortcakes together. All right, so we've got the wet and the dry ingredients. Now, last thing I have to do is mix them up. At this point, you guys wanna preheat your oven to 350 degrees, okay? Preheat it, hopefully you can do that before you start making these scones, uh, shortcakes, excuse me, so that when it's ready to add to the oven, your oven will be ready for the shortcakes, They'll be, it'll be hot and ready, and it will just need to bake for a few minutes. That's what makes this recipe quick and easy. So come prepared, have your oven hot. I don't wanna miss anything, some escape from my bowl, so let me grab that. And really, you can't over mix this. Because this is gluten-free, there's really not much to overmix here. But what I'm trying to do is incorporate the coconut oil. So just watch me do it. Let me give you the full look at what I'm doing. There we go. All right, every once in a while, I'm gonna stop and just kind of like make sure to grab everything off of my spoon. and. I'll do it right here. Okay. This looks great. You can see there's big chunks of flaxseed. 
uh, egg, there's big chunks of coconut oil. At this point, I'm gonna take it with my hands and I'm gonna start to just crumble this. Really just start to crumble it until it looks or result, uh, resembles like wet sand. It's already starting to look like this. It's fantastic. All right, Danny, you're gonna be on camera now because my hands are dirty. Do you mind giving me that widescreen? I got you. Thank you. It takes a village. <laughs> All right, this looks fantastic. I love it. It smells just like coconut oil. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be fantastic. All right, so at this point, you have your oven. It's preheated, right? 350 degrees. I'm gonna take my cookie sheet. I'm gonna use a line cookie sheet with that sill pad. I gave you the link for it yesterday. If you want it, check it out. Let me place this down. I'll keep the bowl next to me so you can really see. There's a couple ways to go about this. You could actually just take it with your hands um, and you can actually make really kind of like loose balls and then place them down. But I like to use this. This is a scoop. It's an ounce and a half. No, I'm sorry, this is the two ounce scoop. Make a mound and place it down. Make a mound. Make sure that the mound is, it's not too tight. Place it down. Make another mount. Let's bake four. And because I did this one by hand, this one's too small and it's gonna burn. So I'm gonna make sure that I, I'm gonna put it back and I'm gonna scoop it up again and make sure that everything is about the same size. It's really gonna help to keep that baking time consistent. Now, at this point, what you wanna do is you can keep them tall like this, but it is going to take a lot longer to bake. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I actually am gonna flatten these out. Just so ever so slightly. All right. You don't need to spray the sill pad or anything because it is nonstick already. These look fantastic and are ready for the oven. Let me just pop them in. All right, I'm gonna bake these for 12 minutes. It's really not gonna take a long time. Um, in the meantime, let's chat. Let's talk about some nutrition facts. I'm gonna give you some resources and let's talk more about flaxseed. If you have any questions, now's the time, ask. Let me just wipe my hands. I think I'm gonna use a paper towel for this. Thank you, Tree, thank you, Tree. I really appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so let me get to the comments box, but let me, let me just take a minute to wipe my hands. All right. Now I'm obviously gonna bake off the rest of these shortcakes, but I'll do it a little later. I'm just gonna start with the four so you guys can see and they bake up quick. All right, let's just see if there's any questions. Let's see, yeah. Okay, here's a good question. Do you refrigerate uh, your almond meal or almond flour? Yes, I refrigerate both. I refrigerate any of my nut or seed meals or flours or any of my whole seeds and nuts. I do this because it is going to make them last so much longer. Um, the reason I do this is because nuts and seeds are very high in oil. They're very, very fatty and rich foods, high in oil, high in fat, and that fat and oil can go rancid very quickly. Now we can slow that deterioration down by keeping them cold, okay? So just like anything else with a high fat content, you wanna keep it in the refrigerator, and if you do, it'll keep it fresher longer especially nuts and seeds, I tend to be able to taste, they actually taste crispier when they're held in the refrigerator. So that's a great question. Thank you, Marie. Yes, thank you. Um, I, th that's a great little tip and comment. Um, Roberta Baumgartner, my mom, says that she loves the Miyoko's butter, Miyoko's butter at Trader Joe's. You can find it even at Trader Joe's now. It's fantastic. So I know that you love it, mom, just as much as I do. And hey, if you can't find it, because hey, sometimes right now it's just hard to find certain things. Remember, coconut oil is kind of a standard ingredient you can get at any grocery store. So if you're really having trouble finding that plant-based butter, opt in for coconut oil. And usually there's gonna be two kinds. So have both um, just on hand. They're both great for lots of different uses. Great question. Great comment, I should say. Hi, Charlene, good to have you. Charlene was in our Plant-Based Made Easy month two program that we did and it was really fun. Um, thank you so much. April is here, hi, April. Let's see, all right, we got the link up. 
Uh, let me, here's another question. Are, are white flax seeds bad? I think that's what the question is. Are, are whole flax seeds bad? Um, I don't know what you mean by bad, but I'll say, no, they're not. They're not bad at all. Whole flax seeds are fantastic. They're really, really good for us. But here's the thing. I think this is going to capture the essence of your question. Uh, whole flax seeds are very high, uh, hard for our human bodies to digest fully. So what that means is we can digest them, but they're usually not going to be able to be extracted of those micronutrients. Those are the vitamins and the minerals, things that are really, really kind of these smaller amounts, but really important vital properties that are needed in our daily diet. In the whole form, the body has a harder time uh, digesting these and extracting them into the bloodstream. So when we pulse them, even just for a second in a spice grinder or a food processor, we have more access to these micronutrients. That's why it's really important to have kind of ground flax meat meal as part of your diet. So that, I hope that answers the question. Please let me know, does it? Yes, you got it. Okay, now I'm seeing your next comment, whole flax seeds versus crushed, which is easier for digestion. Yes, you got it. It's the flaxseed meal. It's the chia seed meal. It's the anything that's been broken up is a little easier for us, like I said, to remove all those nutrients. Awesome, good questions, you guys. Thank you so much. All right, let's come back to it, you guys. Hey, I wanna just uh, talk about choosing our health, hashtag choose health really, really important. We're talking about this day in and day out. More important now than ever before for us to continue to make health a priority. Why do I emphasize this so much? It's not because I'm just like a health nerd, which I am. It's not just because of that. It's actually because I know the power of our plate and I want to introduce you to the power of your plate so that when we nourish well, we not only help our bodies to thrive, but our whole life can start to thrive. Our whole life can start to change when we actually prioritize our health first and everything will follow. It's like a ripple effect. So let's talk about flaxseed meal in greater depth here. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see here. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Look, I want to share this with you. You guys see an infographic in front of you. We talked about omega 3s. So here's my plea to you. Um, I really hope that you'll consider choosing better omega 3s, please. Um, here's the rundown. I'm not going to go through every single bit of this because it's quite hefty. There's a lot of information here, but what are omega 3s? Uh, they are fatty acids, fatty chain acids that are derived from this ALA and it's converted into these other fatty acids, EPA, DHA. We hear a lot about these things, but very few people really know what they do. But I'm going to just jump jump you right to the most important part. Let me just reveal the, the, the most important part, which is they're super good for you. Flax seeds are the highest amount of omega-3s that we can consume as humans. Um, the adequate intake amount for women is about 1.1 grams per day. And for men, it's about 1.6. It really depends on your body size, though, and what you're dealing with. Um, you can simply kind of put on a measuring scale, on a scale, a weight scale, you can actually take a tablespoon or so and get to 1.1 or 1.6 grams. So it's important to do that if you're interested. But I say, and I've read oftentimes, anywhere between a tablespoon to about two tablespoons of ground flaxseed meal um, a day is really kind of great for our health. So that's a very easy thing to do. You can add it on top of salads. You can put it on top of soup. You can put it in salad dressing. You can mix it in as like a thickening agent, kind of like cornstarch. You can use it as a plant-based egg. Lots of uses for these things. And of course, one of the easiest ways is you can throw them into baked goods, um, like tr truly not even as an egg, but like throwing them into baked goods for extra flavor and extra fiber. That would be totally fine. And as you, you would just throw that into your dry mix, like a dry ingredient, as opposed to then using them as an egg, um, you could even use both. So lots of great uses for them. Um, they are, there are other great sources of omega-3s in edamame, in walnuts, in black beans and kidney beans, and in winter squash. That was new for me. I didn't realize that until now. And I'm just going to put in front of you that, look, there's a photo of a fish here. Why not me? You know, we always think that we can get omega-3 fatty acids from fish. Well, we certainly can. But what we're going to get with that fish is a couple other things. 
contaminants is the biggest thing um, from the water pollution. Uh, big, big, big thing. And the other thing is that fi uh, fish does not have any fiber. So while we're extracting those good fatty acids, we're never going to get any of the fiber that we're seeking. And truly, most Americans, 90% of us, are deficient in fiber. If you switch to a whole food plant-based diet, though, that's the number one thing, the number one macronutrient you'll get in abundance with plant foods. So I hope that that helps you out, kind of answers the question for you. Um, I'll leave that up for a second. I'm just going to check my shortcakes. Oh my gosh, these look so good. I'm going to flip them. Now they're getting golden brown. They're really getting great. Mm, this looks great. I, I can't wait to fill them. I'm going to go ahead and close my infographic here, you guys. I hope that was helpful. All right, let's come back to it. Now I'm going to get my uh, accoutrement or our company mints together for our shortcakes. Danny, can you lower the volume of the music just a bit? I feel like it's loud for me. It's probably loud for you guys. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm gonna get my mango yogurt that we made just on Monday. If you didn't get a chance to watch that episode, go back and watch it, all right? Because it's really, really easy and really fun. I have it in the refrigerator. So this is from Monday. This is amazing mango yogurt. It's mangoes that are frozen with a little tofu, a little cashews. You could just use cashews if you're not into tofu or you can't have it. Mixed up together, a little bit of salt, just delicious in a high speed blender. It gets super smooth and creamy. It's yummy. And I added two probiotics to this. So it has a ton, about 60 billion CFUs of probiotics because we've added them with a probiotic capsule that we opened and dumped into our yogurt mix. Really easy to do. So we're going to actually make these like kind of like grilled stone fruit yogurt shortcakes, okay? Like, you know, strawberry shortcakes, but we're going to use our grilled stone fruit from yesterday. So we have some grilled stone fruit here that I made from yesterday. We have apricot. We have peaches and another apricot, right? We added just some quick grill marks to them by adding them right to a hot grill pan. I let it come up to temp first. I didn't add any oil to the grill pan. I left it just regular as was. Um, just let those, those natural sugars caramelize and they are super ready for my knife to be sliced up, diced up, whatever you want. We're gonna layer them, sandwich them inside of this shortcake, top it with a little bit of this mango yogurt, some fresh mint, so good. Let me check these shortcakes. Oh man, these look fantastic. And they didn't even take that long. Look, they didn't take long at all. I'll take one here. Hey, why not two? I'm a little hungry. All right, two. What about me? All right, Danny, I'll make you one. A little hot. I got to get this off with like a, a knife. And just set them aside. They need to come to room temp. Um, just slightly come down. If you try to open them right now, they're going to crumble into pieces. So let me turn this off. Let me put my sh other shortcakes aside. All right, so we've got our stone fruit, we've got our yogurt. Let me grab a big spoon for this. I want a, a long spoon. I keep this in a jar. I date the jar. This is 6, 15, 20. I know this yogurt is gonna last me for about five to seven days, but I'm telling you, it won't even last that long in your refrigerator because you're gonna eat it quicker than that. It's that good. All right, so I'm gonna take my spoon, place it in there. Now, let me just slice up these peaches. Honestly, if you watched yesterday's episode when I um, grilled these peaches, the stone fruit, the peaches and the apricots, you know that it didn't take long. You can see I kept the skin intact and I'm just going to dice these into small bite sized bits. You can keep them in slices as well, but my shortcakes are rather small. So I want to match that with small bits of apricot as well as peach so that I can get a little apricot and peach in every bite. This looks so good. I love grilled stone fruit. Like I said, it's one of my favorite desserts, just as is, but we are making it better with the shortcake. All right. Jenny, I'm going to make you your separate plate. Make one for my love and one for me. There you go. So, shortcake down. Let's see if I can open this. It's kind of... It's kind of gonna crumble probably, it's gonna be hard to open it. I'm not even gonna try, I'm gonna keep it totally whole because it's too warm. Promise you, if you let these come to room temp though, they'll be great, but we're gonna keep them whole. We're gonna do a scoop of this yogurt, just like you would whipped cream, 
for a strawberry shortcake, except for we're being smart about this because we're using mango probiotic protein rich yogurt. It's going to be even better than a empty calorie fat, fatty whipped cream that isn't going to do anything for our health, but make us not feel healthy. Okay. This looks great. Place that aside. Place that aside. Going to clean up my plate here because I missed a bit. That's all right. Now we're going to throw down our stone fruit. I want a little bit of mango and a little bit of peach. Yum, this looks so good. I don't know about you, but I am like a, a quick bread fiend. I love my shortcakes. I love my biscuits, my stones, my scones, my muffins. I love all of that stuff. It makes me feel good, especially if I can make a healthier version. These look fantastic. I know these are a healthier version. Now, how about some fresh mint? I have my mint here sitting in water just to kind of like perk up. Take a piece of this. Place it down. This is just going to sing. You can also just like rip this in bits. Oh, come on. I think we need a little bit more than that. Can't even see it. There we go. There we go. All right. So what do you think? Pretty simple, pretty easy. Did not take long. Our amazing gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free, totally yummy almond shortcakes with grilled stone fruit. Today I'm using grilled peaches, grilled apricot, and a homemade quick and easy mango probiotic and protein rich yogurt. Come on. How could you even refuse this? I know that you're not refusing it. I just, I'm, I'm see, speaking to that part of you that's like, that can't be good. That just can't be good. How could that be good? Well, I'm telling you, if you give it a little try, you'll believe me in a heartbeat. All right, so I'm going to try for you because I have to every single day. I have to just try the, the fruits of my labor, a little yogurt, a little shortcake, a little tiny apricot. Here we go. Mm. Oh, come on. So good. No, truly, it's so good. I need another bite. You will not believe how yummy this is. It truly tastes like there's cream and eggs in this. It is rich. It is moist. It's crumbly, it's warm, it's nutty. I love that I can taste just hints of flaxseed, just hints of almond, just hints of coconut. Holy moly, does that taste good with the mango yogurt. It's really a good combination. And with the mint, hmm. Danny, try this. Hmm. Hmm. So yummy. Danny's gonna love this. He's gonna love this. Hmm. What do you think? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's a happy guy right there. I'm a happy gal. Got to stay hydrated. You guys try this recipe, will ya? I'll throw it up on our Plant Based Made Easy Facebook group. If you haven't joined us yet, please join us. We have cultivated such a wonderful group of people. We have a lot of voices, a lot of different people in this group of all ages, all walks of life, really curious about plant-based food, how to make it fun, how to make it easy, how to make it super, super duper simple. That's what I am all about. So I want to share with you all of what I know. Uh, make sure that you choose health and make that a priority. And if you haven't already, here's your call to action. Please follow me on Instagram, will ya? And follow me on Facebook. I really would love to see you on Instagram as well as Facebook. Um, we are really doing a lot with these live streams every single day. And if there's something that you want to see, please reach out and let me know. Um, we always love to take your comments, your questions, your suggestions. I want to actually cook food and prepare food within my means. If it's something that you want to see and that I can provide for you, I am super happy to do a live cooking lesson. So use me as your resource, okay? Um, it sounds like there's a lot of wonderful movement here on the comment box. Um, Kent, look, I, I, there's a, a, a wonderful bunch of questions here that I'll address afterwards because I think we're right at this moment here, right at the end. Um, I want to just thank everyone for being here. We got a lot of good love. Thank you again, everyone, for join, joining us. Um, 
I love that some of your family members are interested in going plant-based. Some of my family members have gone plant-based. Let me just tell you really quickly. Now, so far, I'm keeping a tally. My mom, my dad, my stepmom, my stepdad, my grandmother, who's 83, and my aunt have all gone plant-based. Totally, 100%. They're all plant-based, completely vegan. It puts a smile on my face to know that we are really creating a ripple effect. I've decided to go plant-based and look what's happened just within my own circle. And that is what you can do too. too. And Danny, hello, I can't even forget. Danny, hello. Well, Danny eats what I eat, so there you go. You guys, thank you so much for being here. Come back for more tomorrow. We are gonna make amazing, an amazing Friday fruity pizza. Yes, I said it. I'm making a fruity pizza on Friday. We are gonna make a crust from oats and delicious, amazing fiber rich ingredients. We're gonna top it with the last bit of our mango yogurt and some more fruit. I'm giving you all the ways and uses for this delicious yogurt, you guys. I hope you caught the theme here. So tomorrow, please come back. We're making Friday pizza. It's fruity, it's yummy, it's so good. If I can't see you tomorrow on the live stream, you can always watch any of the replays, you guys. And let's see, well, go out there, have a wonderful rest of your day. Keep it loving, keep it fun. And most importantly, keep it magical. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.